Good morning, YouTubians. Gary with VW Jawbreaker. Welcome to the channel. You know, we know there's Weber carburetors. We know there's MP carburetors. Did you know that they make MP clone carburetors? That's right. I picked up two of these IDFs for $180. Are they any good? Will they work? Let's go to the bench and let's find out. Hi, right, welcome to the bench. So I've already taken one of these apart. And again, this is a, a Chinese clone if you will but it's essentially the same it takes the same jet same everything so we already went through this one we're gonna go ahead and unbox the other one get the other one out and i'll show you exactly what we're looking for to make sure that these clone carburetors are going to be set up for what you need So as the birds are out there chirping this morning, we'll go ahead and get started on unboxing and getting the other one set up. As you can see here, we just need a couple of different, a flathead of your choice, Phillips head, eight, 10 millimeter, seven thirty second socket, and a digital caliper. That's about all you need. And you can do everything that you were getting ready to do on this, except for, well, need a 10 millimeter. We gotta get those Venturi's off. And a feeler gauge. It's going a little above and beyond there, but that's okay. So let's move this off to the side. And let's go ahead and get this other carburetor open. Now these do come with your intake gaskets and some different throttle linkages, levers and whatnots. So that'll be easy to help set everything up. And these do have, from the factory, some kind of slight oil coating on everything. But as you can see, I mean, this is an IDF clone. It's exactly just like your MP or Redline carburetor. Question is, can we set it up right to run the same? So let's go ahead and start tearing into this. First, we need to get the stacks off, and we'll go ahead and take the top off, start pulling everything out. Um, Now on this back one back here, the stud actually came out. And it's not really too much of a big deal. we will just go ahead and run it down, and get it to stop where it's supposed to. Kind of do that to all of them, just get them snug down. Now you can take your flathead of your choice. Go ahead and start pulling these. They look like brass screws, but believe it or not, they're not brass. They're actually metal. Go ahead and pull our stacks out. Now on your stacks, I don't know how well I would trust the jets on the stacks or your idle jets, which are here. I don't know how much I would trust those without being a way to measure to make sure they are what they are. The emulsion tubes that comes with actually comes with an F2 emulsion tube. And for a dual carb setup on a Volkswagen, you want to run an F11 emulsion tube. Jet stack holders are, those are fine. But again, I would not recommend running those jets unless you have a way to verify those jets are good. All right, now we just carefully lift the top off. And I say carefully because there is a gasket there. 
and you need to pull the gasket with the top because that float holds that gasket in place. So you need to make sure that that gasket comes with it. Don't let it rip. So we'll set the lid off to the side for now. And then here you'll see, down in here you've got your Venturi's. Got your Venturi's there, your secondary jets, your pumps. We'll go ahead and pull the idle uh, idles, uh, jets out. The idle jets are out. Now the nice thing is these do have the provision for a vacuum advance, just like your red line or empties do. You simply just take that little screw out right there and that's for a vacuum advance if you need it. So again, essentially these are empty. I mean, why wouldn't they be made in the same exact factory as everything else? You got your O-rings in place, everything's in place. We'll go ahead and take all this out. Let's go ahead and take our accelerator pump apart. Make sure there's no debris in there. Make sure it's not crusty. You never know. Hard saying how long you set on a shelf somewhere. And just sometimes just give it a little tap tap. It'll come apart. Smooth surface, soft and pliable. I'm not seeing any issues at all so far. Everything is looking good. It's actually pretty clean down in the bowl as well. Real no uh, casting issues or anything else I'm really seeing. There's no sharp edges. I think what we'll do is just give this thing a good bench clean. But before we do that, <clears throat> there's something very important I need to show you. These butterflies. These butterflies are not centered properly. <laughs> you will not get it to run right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our idle stop right here. And we're going to back it out until it doesn't touch. You notice there, it's not touching. I'm going to take a block of wood here. Now with your Phillips head screwdriver, just put a little pressure. Turn them. There we go. Loosen them up just that little bit. Loosen all four. Some people do like to put Loctite back on, it may not hurt. You don't want those wiggling loose. Now that those are loose, you want to make sure those are perfectly centered. Don't open the throttle too much because it, <laughs> it will move around that little bit. So what we're doing, is we're just slowly working it just a little bit make sure they are centered and of course this one is the other one was not actually if you notice it's slightly slightly closed the gap a little bit so it was slightly off just run those back in snug them up like i said you could put some wouldn't recommend red but maybe some blue loctite or something on there or I guess maybe a color of your preference. Now one thing before we get into bench cleaning, these are your Venturi holders. We just wanna make sure that they're snug but not overly tight. Okay. There we 
we go. Those are fine. Lock the little lock nuts back down. <clears throat> got those out. These are your air bypass screws. We've already got our mixture screw out. But right here is your air bypass screw. We need to make sure that those are in and seated. So we need the eight millimeter. Loosen those up. And you don't want these tight, tight. You just want them snug. Just bring them down. You feel them snug. That's it. There we go. So those are good. Snug those up. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn our throttle back in until it just starts to touch. As soon as it starts to touch, I'll give it just another half a turn to a turn and we're going to take a 2000s feeler gauge just be able to get that in and they should be equal on both sides all the way around that's another way you can tell that you get your butterflies straight and they're in the hole properly so that's a good baseline to start now we'll go ahead I'm just gonna blow everything out real good with a compressor and some brake clean and we'll go ahead and start reassembly. Oh, well, we'll go ahead and go over this now. Accelerator pump. That's a lot of thread sticking out. So take that 732nd. And a good place to start is take this all the way out. All right, until the nut is flush with the end. Almost there. There we go, it's flush. I found, uh, usually find a spot on here that I can see, and I'll rotate it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. See how much less is sticking out? Yes. So too much accelerator squirt is going to cause you problems in the long run. Oh, and before I forget, I was showing somebody else this. If you look down in there, I'll see if I can get you to see it. But there are actual four progression holes right down here. So these are just like the rubbers and red lines and empties. All right. I'll blow brake clean through everything. Compressor everything, reassemble, set our float. We'll be good to go. All right, <clears throat> so we've got our accelerator pump back on, we've got our throttle shaft set, it's even all the way around, mixture screws to lightly seated, okay? Don't jam them in there, you'll ruin it. Out a turn and a half. Now we go to the float. And I actually need to show you something before we go too much further. These little breather holes right here. You want to make sure that when you put that gasket on, those holes are there. If not, you need to make little holes in the gasket. If you don't, won't breathe right. We'll have some issues. 
so we've got the needle and seat. This is the nice one with the little, not really a rubber tip, but it's not really brass. Um, everything else feels really good. So we'll go ahead and put this back together, put the needle back in the float, back in the seat. Now when I did the other one, the float was really, really far off. So I'll do my best to kind of show you all that. Alright, full droop. You want like, I think it's 30 millimeters. It could be 35, but you'll notice that's way off. Well, trying to get this angle right is not easy. There we go. So there's a tab back here in the back that you need to bend out for it to allow your full droop. So you hold the gasket in place and measure against the gasket, and there we go. Ah, oh, nice. First try. Now, for your closed, the book will tell you 10 millimeters. I've noticed I've had better luck with today's gasolines doing 12 millimeter. So what I'll do is I'll set my micrometer for 12 millimeter and then lock it down so it doesn't move. Then I can turn it off if I want to save battery. But that way, in protrusion, all right, it's sticking out exactly 12 millimeter. So let's go ahead and measure first what we have. And when you do these, if you notice, again, we're going to try to get this in there. If you notice the needle and seat will move, but the tail end of that little ball right there, you want it, you don't want the ball to press, you just want the needle in. So the best way to do it is to hold it sideways to where it kind of sits and we're kind of far off you're far off we're actually a little bit further down on this one that we need to be we're just going to kind of like to use a little pair of needle nose so i can kind of just push those two together a tad with the gasket, ball not depressed. We got a little bit more to go. Gasket, ball not depressed. Too much. Almost there, almost. This is the most important part because if your float's not set right, it's not going to run right. There we go. We're set right at 12 millimeter. Oh, my hat was in the way the whole time. Sorry. We are set right where we need to be. That sucks. Why didn't you tell me my hat was in the way? So now that the float's set, we can go ahead and carefully drop this float back in. Drop the whole top assembly on. Put your screws back in. All right, so now that we got pretty much everything set except for getting our jets straightened out or swapped out however we're going to do that in order to do set this one up for the other side all we had to do was swap these around that way the fuel comes in the other direction uh, took our throttle stop screw out from this side put it on this side with the adapter i wanted to use I didn't bend this tab over and snug this up yet because I've still got to put my linkage piece on there. 
but I think this will work out nice. Everything's working well. So anyway, till the next time, be kind to one another and be good.